So I wanted to take a minute to talk about secure messaging. Now, things like email, not secure. The way the transport layers work and things like that, email, once again, like so many protocols on the internet, were not designed to be secure. So Moxie Marlin Spike is a security researcher, a very talented security researcher, who spent a lot of time looking at how messages are passed back and forth in general, and also cracking the methodologies for how those uh, protocols work. That being said, that gave him a lot of insight to create the protocol that is the system that became Signal. So there's a whole iteration of this, and I'm gonna leave links. You can read the entire progress of the software, the history of Red Phone and Tech Secure, which were the two projects that now merged together are now called Signal, uh, and Open Whisper Systems, which is Moxie's company. Uh, it, it's really interesting if you're into that field, but we're gonna talk about just functional usage of the software and how it works. Um, I also have links to the source code that I'll throw in here. And one of the things that's important to know about this is Signal is based all on open source, so you may get all of the uh, pieces of it if you wanted to roll your own and build it out. That's something important about any security tool. If they don't release the source code they're using for it, how do you know it's secure? If they are a third-party company that has all kinds of transit servers in the middle, how do you know it's secure that they aren't decrypting it? Well, a lot of those problems are solved in a very interesting way with Signal. One, by being open source. Two, by himself being in the security community. Uh, he has lots of quotes on the page from the vetting it has gone through by other security researchers who understand mathematics, including Bruce Schneier, uh, the famous uh, security technologist researcher, uh, who's also taken a look at it. So it is not like they just, oh yeah, it's great, I like it. No, they went and are able to see the code. You're able to see the code, whether or not your uh, skill set is in reading code, it has been thoroughly vetted. The one thing that we're gonna start with is it does require a phone to start with, either an Android or iOS phone with a working phone number to get it going. That being said, um, the way that works is it uses your phone number as a registration and it's recent, you receive a text message on that phone and that text message you'll put back in as the verification code to authorize that phone. They do have a desktop app. They do have um, a kind of like a browser-based app for Chrome, which is kind of cool. Uh, I like the desktop app. But you do those when you want to add other machines onto it, like my laptop and my desktop. I do so by starting with my phone, you scan a QR code, and I'll actually drag over here to give you an idea what it looks like. I put this where I put QR code, but this is where the QR code goes. So when you open up the desktop app, whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, yes, it's got full support for all of them, you actually point your phone's camera at this, scan the QR code, and that's how you get the devices linked together, which is nice because I don't really want to type on my phone all the time and it's a really convenient way to do this. Now things you can't do from the phone or can't do from the desktop that you can do from the phone is going to be some of the phone calls, which is cool that it has that, but that does have to be done from the phone itself. That being said, let's move a little further about some of the features on this. So say anything, send high quality group text, chat, video, document, picture, messages. Uh, it's not it's similar to SMS, it can integrate with your SMS, but the protocol it's actually using to use is standard internet protocol. So you do need an internet enabled, internet connected phone to get this rolling and to do the communication. And the way it works on your desktop, of course, is over the internet as well. The phone call, I have tested it, it works quite well. And once again, it's not using standard to, to love telephony protocol is not it's using data protocols over the internet that being said it creates a secure and end encryption there as well state private signal message calls collected and end encrypted painstakingly engineered to keep your communication safe we cannot read your messages or see your calls no one else can either this is a really important feature like i said all of this is in an encryption and they solve a lot of these problems of being subpoenaed uh, to find out who's who by simply not having the data. They only can't essentially as a proxy between you and the person you're connecting to. And the way you connect to other people is having their phone number. So by adding someone in your contacts list uh, that also has signal, they will show up on your list. And it's kind of fun because I have so many security friends, as soon as I loaded it, all their names showed up on there that they're using Signal, and then you can do a verification with them to make sure it's actually them. More on that in a second. Uh, keep your hat, chat history tied to messages that you can set to disappear. Yes, self-destructing messages are a thing. And what that does is I know someone could do a screenshot. That's really not what this is a protection against. Let's say I wanted to send you something 
um, and I have decided you're not an adversary, you're a friend, and I want to send it, this allows me to send you a screenshot and say, you know, whatever I want to send you uh, a message, but that message expired. Maybe it would be a password, a temporary one, but you don't want that in the message histories. So if I send it and I set the timer that go ahead and do this, and you get the timer to one minute, five seconds, uh, whichever you choose, when you set the timer, the message disappears. I know they could screenshot it, but you're wanting to give them the message anyways. It's more of a historical thing. If someone ever got a hold of their phone later, those messages would be wiped from their phone. So that's where that comes into play. Free for everyone, this is another thing. Yes, Signal does not cost anything. Signal is made uh, for you as an open source project supported by grants and donations. Signal puts users first. No ads, no affiliate marketers, no creepy tracking. Uh, just open technology for fast and simple secure message experience the way it should be. Now, this is really important because they have gotten some major donations from large companies. And uh, Moxie himself is a security researcher making money in the field for doing his day job uh, supporting this project. So in it being open source, if something were to happen <laughs> to Moxie, hopefully nothing does, um, but it is an open source project and could be picked up by someone. Just That's one of the nice things about it. Now, a little bit more on what they're doing. Uh, there's Moxie Martin. So like they're actually using, and I think I've got it pulled up in here in the encryption protocols. Signal messages are encrypted with the tech secure protocol is what they used to call it. Um, the protocol combines a double ratchet algorithm, pre-keys, and a 3DH handshake uh, using elliptic curve 2519 AES uh, 256. Now, a lot of words here, and like I said, you can, I'll click either of but this is really cool because this supports forward secrecy. So first you have the encryption method between you and the proxy. Then inside of there is a temporary encryption key, which is your perfect forward secrecy key, which means if someone were able to see it in between, essentially double encrypted, then it's landed on the other person. And those those are ephemeral keys, and what ephemeral means is it just goes away. So doing all those steps right here, and they're using all standard, well-documented protocols. And this is important because some companies have chose to roll their own security. That's a scary thought. Um, unvetted security uh, is a crapshoot. It may be good, it may be bad, but until it's really been poked at, nobody knows. Because they're using well-documented security, great. It's It's been proven. It's really good ciphers. They didn't invent the wheel again when it comes to the encryption protocols they used. It's really, really simple. Now, the other clever thing they do, and this is where uh, this has helped out in places that have tried to block it. This is an example. Uh, I think Egypt was one of the last places that made some attempts to block it, uh, different things. And one of the ways to get around is actually they use Google's CloudFront system. And it's called Domain fronting. So, and I'll leave this link in article uh, from Wired in here as well, so you can read through here to understand better what domain fronting does. You can look it up as well. The short of it is it's using um, content delivery networks, and in particular, they're using Google's uh, CDN technology. Now, the only way you can block signal, so if someone's using it inside your building, for example, and you want to even block them there, the only way you can do is block Google in its entirety. You have to stop Google. Because that's very difficult in a lot of these other countries, because Google, as we know, is kind of the default go-to, using Google's content delivery network as a proxy system to get the signal across uh, to other people means it's really, really hard to block. And the fact that, once again, I, as I've repeated here, they don't keep your data. You also can't subpoena and go, I want to know what messages Tom sent. So the only way they could get it is to actually get a hold of your phone. Hopefully you're using encryption on the phone, but if you're using disappearing messages on a regular basis, maybe even 24 hours, they would only be able to get as far back as those disappearing messages were sent to. And of course, you can always purge out your messages on your own time and schedule as you see fit. But this is just a really great tool. It's really easy to use as uh, the Signal app itself is. I'm not gonna show you screenshots of mine because for, uh, I, I kind of wish there was a way to fix this. Maybe I'll, I'll suggest a feature request. It always puts the person's phone number right there. And I guess it's not, a, I don't know if it's, I just want to be able to hide it, but it's probably not real relevant because I only want to hide it for uh, doing the video. I didn't feel like trying to uh, blur it out because it's got all my friends' names in it and things like that. Uh, but Signal's been great. I use it for any time I got to send a secure message or just in general for messaging for any time you don't want things. I mean, everyone does like Facebook Messenger. Yeah, it's really convenient. Um, but to the other side of that is, you know, they are 
the, the convenience they are offering because they are a business uh, pushed by shareholders at Facebook, they are slurping up all your messages. So is Skype. So are all these other companies. Uh, so you just have to you know weigh the risks on there. But for generally speaking, using uh, Signal Messenger as a secure messaging app because you want to have a discussion that you don't think should be uh, between any more than you and the person that you want to speak with, Signal is a great tool for that. And I did notice that Telegram popped up over here. Um, they're, I'm not going to get in depth on Telegram. They've had some issues. They've kind of rolled their own security. They don't have security on by default unless they change something. I really looked at them a while ago and I've decided to stay away from them. And I don't think people, some of the other people in the security industry, including Bruce Schneier, who did not have nice things to say about Telegram, they have not changed their stance on it. Um, they're a lot smarter than me in, on this stuff. So I'll trust their uh, judgment on there and I'll keep using Signal. Um, but it's been a popular tool between me and a lot of my other friends that work in uh, computer security and I use it to even talk to my wife you know uh, this is if these are private messages I do not think Facebook needs to be in the middle of it or any other messaging company and signal is a company that you know they're not keeping it so they're a good one to keep in there so uh, hopefully you found this interesting um, it's like I said a great tool it's free so you don't really have an excuse for not trying it out um, unless you just don't like privacy or security uh, but I can trust you can do some digging reading and I'll leave all these links in here so you can you know read on your own about who Moxie Mileage Bike is so you understand that because it's good to understand the people sometimes involved in these projects and what their intentions are. And like I said, this guy has got some really great security research that led him to discover this. Well, you got a guy who who spent a lot of time took in, taking the internet apart to figure out how these things happen and is very aware of uh, surroundings and then coming up with things that allowed uh, people to bypass governments because he thinks private messaging is a right. You do have a right to privacy. Um, and he's been fighting censorship with it, which is just outstanding. Uh, I really, you know, I really applaud the efforts that he's had here. That's why even on his <laughs> on the homepage here and people who have endorsed him has been Edward Snowden as well. It's like I said, it's a really solid, secure messaging app. It's super easy to use. You can just replace your uh, current messaging app uh, with it, like your MMS and SMS. And then in addition to your MMS and SMS, use it for signal messaging. Uh, so, OK, if you find it interesting, you'd like to comment here, like and subscribe. If you have questions for me or uh, thoughts on Signal, uh, leave them below. But yeah, it's it's an easy tool to use. It's got a desktop app. It supports all the major platforms. Um, yeah, give it a go. And open source. If you say, man, I think the protocol is amazing. I don't even trust using your proxy servers. Go grab all the open source and write your own server. Uh, that's I love companies that leave us all the code because that's the way we vet and understand this. All right, thanks.